And we actually unlocked Omaha. We unlocked Omaha. They're in a cover two. So I'm actually going to do this. This is not something I would normally do. But since they're in a cover two, I can tell. They're going to break off the streak. They broke off the streak. What's good, everybody? We're back. It's going to be another Chaos Coach today. And I heard a lot of the feedback from the last video. So we're going to continue to keep these a little bit longer, a little bit more focus on our coaching, and a little bit less focus on edits. So less edits, less zooms, more focus on breaking down what we're doing throughout the game, both on offense and on defense. And I heard the feedback about showing a little bit more of my play art, showing it more often. I'm going to try to do that more today. That's it for this. I don't want to keep the intro any longer than it needs to be. Let's jump over to the lineup, then we'll get into these games. So we have made a few changes to our lineup since our last video. Not a ton, but we have made a few. We still have Josh Allen as our starting QB. Reggie Bush is our starting running back. Raheem Mostert is our backup running back. And that option that we can sub in at wide receiver if we decide we want to audible to different personnel. Outside of just the three wide receivers, one running back, one tight end personnel that we have from Trips tight end. We have Terry McLaurin as our starting wide receiver still. And then we did pick up Chad Johnson to replace Stephon Diggs. Still a route running wide receiver is able to get that route technician, which is what we want in that position. And then they also get slot apprentice outside apprentice. Now we don't use those on our route running wide receiver, but that's still an option for you. So we did pick up Chad Johnson. It's going to give you plus one speed over Stefan Diggs. We did pick up Marquise Brown also. Now that's because on Thanksgiving, there's a couple things that Marquise Brown could do. I believe it's over 60 yards and or a touchdown. If they meet those things, Marquise Brown will now become actually, I think the fastest wide receiver in the game so that's why we picked marquise brown up isn't going to play today but it's potential for later on if they can meet those goals on thanksgiving games so that's what we, that's why we have marquise brown darren waller still our starting tight end vernon davis going to be that tight end option just like raheem mostert that we can sub outside at that uh, wide receiver spot in order to audible to different things o-line the only change that we've made is upgrading orlando pace with the power up originally we just had orlando pace's top card so that's where we made the changes there we're still using the same same theme teams i've went over those theme teams before so if you want to check out our last chaos coaching i've went over how we have 25 out of 50 for both cardinals and niners defensively we have micah hyde tyran matthew that's in order to meet that cardinals kim and then we have taylor mays adrian wilson now i want to go over in a little bit we'll go over to the specialists to talk about where we where we have starting as like our defensive line because these actually aren't the defensive line that we're typically typically going to start but we have them there for those team cams at corner we have antonio cromartie we have denzel ward drc and Deion Sanders. now it is important to note that a lot of the time antonio cromartie is going to play safety for us now we'll go over to specialists here so i can talk about that a little bit more the other safety we usually are going to have is going to be sneed again these are players in this specialist area that don't meet those team cams you see here the 25 and the 25 for cardinals and niners lawrence taylor's another one Javon Curse is another one. Anyone that didn't meet that we could put in the specialist position that we still wanted to start, we were able to do without taking away from our theme team. So these are going to be usually our starting pass rushers uh, and or just our defensive line, Ricky Jackson, Lawrence Taylor, Don Abraham, and Javon Kurtz. So that's why we have those players in that position and not necessarily in the starting positions. Offensively, we're still using the Raiders O. And then on defense, we're still going to be using that 4-6 defense. That is it for the team. Let's jump into the game. Here we go with game one, and the goal for this video is just to play a couple games, try to break down everything that we're doing throughout the video. Here we go. We're actually going to be starting this game on offense. That's cool. I wanted to go over here. Something that I think is really important when you're on offense is going to, I actually like to go on conservative. That's not something that I, if, whatever you want to do. That's really personal preference. I recommend uh, setting your audibles though. That's something that I feel strongly about. Making sure you're coming out on the, uh, have the right play available if you don't come out on the right one. So maybe you think they're going to play zone and they play man coverage and you want a different play. And I'm also going to set audibles down here because we can audible down to this formation when I sub in tight ends. So what we're going to do here is just set this last audible. We're going to do our subs right here. That's something I think is important too. Making sure you have the right players in the right spot where exactly you want them to be. Maybe you have a great deep route runner that has a great deep route. Maybe you want, so you want them in that spot. Maybe you have some short route runners that you want in a short route running spot. Different things there. Just something I like to note as well. Subbing around, putting your players in the right position, and then knowing where your audibles are. So they're in zone here. You can tell they're, and they actually just audible. Now this is man coverage, it looks like. It could be mid blitz. It could be a cover one hole type. But you can tell it's man coverage, and now they're actually just audible back out. By that corner, you see that corner running back and forth. You can tell that it's man coverage or zone coverage based on where they line up. So since they're not lined up over uh, Chad Johnson there at B, you can tell that it's most likely zone coverage. And there it is. And that's a little bit of a tight throw, a little bit of a tight throw. But that's how we're telling what they're coming out in. And that's why we have our audibles available, right? If they're in man coverage, we might want to run a different play than if they're in zone. So 
Looks like zone here again, so we'll do a zone beating play. And just continuing to try to read the defense pre-snap and then going from there, right? So if we can read the defense pre-snap and then if our read's right, we should know what's going to be open. And if it's wrong, we can try to make a read from there. Ah, that was a little bit tight too. A little bit of another tight throw. I threw that a little bit earlier than I probably would have liked to. With that deep third, you want that streak to push them back. I did not give it enough time to do so. I'm just a quick hike here. Something that's important here is to have a quick hiking play that you feel comfortable going to. I like to have a couple quick hiking plays because that doesn't really allow the defensive a lot of time to adjust, right? So I'm going to actually do it again here. But if they don't have a lot of a time to adjust, that's going to keep them from being uh, able to do exactly what they want to do on the defensive side of the ball. And then when you go to a play where it's not necessarily a quick hike, they might be a little bit hesitant to try to do the adjustments that they were doing before. So that's why it's nice to have them. You don't need a ton of them. One, maybe two, just to be able to mix in throughout a game. And that was man coverage in the last play. This looks like it's going back to zone. Just trying to, every play, I'm trying to note that. Right out of the huddle. Okay, what are they in? What play do I want to go to to counter what they're in? Just take this hitch here. Definitely nothing wrong, really, with taking your checkdowns, especially on a first and 10. I don't mind really taking checkdowns. Unless you think you're really going to have something open deep and you you're, and you know you're going to have time in the pocket, you can wait on it. Just going to run the ball here to try to get this first down. But otherwise, if you don't have any deep routes that you think are going to get open, take the check down, try to get a nice, easier second down, or maybe even move the chains if you can get a nice rack afterwards. So we got a second in inches there, which allowed us to just run the ball and pick up the first down. Now we're going to see if they're in a cover two or cover three. It looks like a cover three. I think we have the corner outside. <gasps> I don't know if we had the corner of outside. I'm kind of glad we got sacked there. I was going to try Waller on the outside, but it looked like that deep third might play it. So I'm glad we didn't get time to throw it. Now we're in a second 16. This is a spot where I love to try to get half of our yards back. It's hard to pick up 16 yards at once, but if we can put ourselves in a third and eight, third and six, something like that, and we'll take our, we'll take our slant there. So right here, let's see. We picked up nine yards. Now it's a third and seven, or third and eight. That's a lot more reasonable then the third and 16. So if we try to pick it all back there and do an incompletion or even took a sack, that makes it a lot tougher to convert. And we actually unlocked Omaha. We unlocked Omaha. They're in a cover two. So I'm actually going to do this. This is not something I would normally do, but since they're in a cover two, I can tell they're going to break off the streak. They broke off the streak. I threw it too late. It's a pick. It's a pick. I thought that that streak would stay in the middle of the field and be, be able to separate those cover two. It did not work the way that we wanted to. So we're going to just do our subs on defense here. Not what we wanted right there, but we'll try to get a stop. They're coming on this I-form wing here. Strong running formation. We'll see what runs they like to go to, which direction they're going to want to run the ball to. Uh, that they're, they, right there, they ran left, and that was away from the strong part of the formation. But just try to kind of figure it out here, see what they like to do. I love a field-out drive on the first drive. I love to see... All right, are they running the ball? Are they passing? Are they going deep? Or are they going short? All those things matter. It's important to note them going throughout the game. So when you get to that third quarter, that fourth quarter, you have a feeling about what they want to do. And uh, this is a tight doubles on formation. I don't play this too, too often, so I'm not 100% sure what they're going to want to go to. Nice route, nice route. And so that, that makes it even more of a feel out drive. If you're familiar with the formation, like a gun bunch, a gun trip side end that you might play more often, you kind of know what they're, they, they might want to go to. But when you play something that you don't really play too often, that makes it even more important to try to figure out early on in the game, going into the late game, what they want to do on both sides of the ball. So I'm going to try to just play a little bit conservative here, try to figure out what they want to do. This cross from not going across the field. Ooh, they actually might have had the running back there. Oh, they still have the running back? Oh, they didn't toe tap it. Okay. Okay. Again. All right. They had that running back on the wheel. Maybe I should man up someone to the running back to prevent them from being able to get that uh, from now on, I don't really have to worry about guarding the running back. When I'm in cover two, man, usually I'm going to try to user the person that's on the running back, but I don't really want to use it. I want to try to stay around the middle of the field. Maybe if they have a corner route that's hurting me, I'll try to go to the uh, I'll try to go to go the outside, but I don't really want to be using the running back exclusively. Watching this middle here. Can we get back to that? Can we get a pick on that? DRC! Oh, wait, we're going to stay up. All right, come on. Come on. Ah, we're not going to get it. All right, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right, let's see if we, we did it. I was okay. I was okay with our first drive, but let's see if we can do a little bit better this time. Try to get at least some points. We don't want to make mistakes in the red zone like we did before. We lost our Omaha, so we don't really have to worry about that too much anymore. When, when, I, when I had Omaha there, I definitely just wanted to try to use it to our advantage, and I thought we did an okay job of that. I put a play out there that I was I liked, but we didn't execute. Ooh, that was close. We got hit. I um. We didn't execute it the right way, right? We didn't we didn't get a touchdown on it. We threw an interception. So if we did get that again, I would try to utilize it again. But we just have to do a little bit better job of it uh, when it comes to the execu execution side. So they played a little bit of cover two. 
So I'm actually gonna try to put a deep post here to try to see if we can split the cover two. It's actually cover three, so it's not it's not gonna be open. Oh, we missed our read. We missed our read. When that flat is there, I already talked about it. Try to take our check downs when they're there. Now we're in a third and 19. Now, depending on what we do on this down, it could be four down territory. I'd like to get about half fit back, maybe a little bit more than half, maybe about 10. If we're able to do that, and it's gonna be man coverage. It's gonna be man coverage right here, it looks like. We have the post, I think. Good job, Waller. All right, we got 13, it looked like. So, fourth and six. I'm actually gonna go for it. I'm actually gonna go for it. I probably, since it's a chaos coach, I probably should give the best advice possible. Unless you feel like you really had a play that you wanted to go to here, it might not be the worst thing to do to punt the ball, but I want to go for it here. I think we I think we have a play that we could possibly pick it up on. And we're going to have the post. We're going to have the post. I bumped a little bit, maybe a little bit nervous, but we're going to take this down to the two-minute warning, see if we can get points before halftime. We're in this double A gap again here. They started off with man line, but you didn't get to see it, but they went back to base line. So yeah, it ended up being... Ended up just being zone. I wasn't sure maybe if they came out in the man coverage and then base aligned after, which would have kept the man coverage, or if they just audibled out, which is what it looked like they did. They audibled to cover two there. Since they were in cover two, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try what we did before. We have a little bit more space. And it's cover three again. We're gonna. I'm going to try Waller. Try Waller. Good job. Gunslinger. I love Gunslinger. I don't know if we make that catch without Gunslinger there, or make that pass, that is, without Gunslinger. So now we're at the 14 here. And I'm going to go to um, a play that I feel like, the slant post that I feel like can get us to the end zone, or at least close to it, and we're gonna have the post. Yes, okay, I wasn't sure we get the pass off. All right, now there's a minute 04 left. Minute 04 left in the half here. We want to play conservative defense. We don't want to give up points three or seven, but we definitely don't want to give a deep pass over the top for seven. You know, something else I didn't note yet. I'm, I'm watching the running back here. I know I said I didn't want to do this, but I'm watching the running back. Something else I don't know if I noted yet was I don't really like to set my coach adjustments as far as what my zones are doing until they show me what they like to do. If they show me crossers, I I, messed, I didn't get the running back there again. Oh, can we make a play? The knockout, that's cool. I didn't set my zone drops to anything. They're just all on default, I'll show you here. I don't think I've set them to anything. Just keep them on default. Once they show me if they're throwing deep crossers, deep corner routes, then I'll start to change them a little bit. But until that point, I really won't make too many changes just because I'm man at the running back right here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna put 20 to 15 yard uh, zones out there if what would actually work, ah, nice catch would actually work would be like just default ones if they're throwing short corner routes maybe they're throwing like 10 yard out routes i like to keep them on default until they show me what they're pl uh, planning on using throughout the game once they show me that i can start to change a little bit and i'm gonna man up oh i didn't get the man i'm not getting my adjustments in very quickly this is what i was talking about quick eye plays <gasps> denzel ward denzel ward just made a play but this is what i'm talking about with quick hiking plays i'm not getting the adjustments in that i would like right so that's that's keeping me on my toes and since I don't have my adjustments in, they're able to dot me. Having those quick high plays can be important. And it's also quick, it's important for me as a defensive player to try to adjust as quickly as possible so we can get those adjustments in. Starting off this half here, our main focus here is getting our adjustments in, which we were not doing at the end of the last half. And then just trying to figure out what they like to do out of their main formation. So they've been going through a, de a decent amount of formations. A lot of the times that you'll see Madden players, kind of like myself, what I, what I tend to do is go to different, for uh, go to the same formation throughout most of the game and not really change up too much. This opponent, which is something that also some Madden players do as well, is just go to a lot of different formations, which is, keeps you guessing. Like, I'm not sure what they're doing on a given play because they haven't gone to every formation too often, right? So keeping that in mind is important and trying to um, just kind of gauge and pick up on as quickly as possible what they want to do. So when they went to this i form wing, they've actually been running this uh, to the outside away from where their, most of their blockers are, right? They've been running to the wide receiver side. I was able to note that in the first half and remember it now starting into the second half. And that's something we picked up on. When they've gone to this tight doubles on, I'm not too familiar. All I can really remember is them going to a, uh, a corner route over here. So I'm gonna put a purple over there. And the corner route's there. Ah, our purple wasn't deep enough. Okay, so now we can go to our zone drops and change up where our uh, curl flats were. So it didn't get deep enough, right? The corner route got over. There was, the corner route was there but it was a little bit too shallow. So now we'll put it on 15. That looked like about a 15 yard corner route. Usually I'll go about 20, but for that one, it looked like 15 was about right. And then now here, they went to spread a couple times in this game, not a ton. That's a nice running back route. That's just something else to pick on. And every time they change formation, I'm trying to pick up on something new. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna put a hard flat on the left to try to stop that running back route and then go from there. And I'm trying to get my adjustments in as quickly as possible here. Oh, send that hard flat. Nice job, LT. Now they're back in this I-form wing here. Again, they've been running it to the opposite side. This time they ran to that side. 
that's a good adjustment by them because I was kind of ready for them to go back towards the wide receiver side the way that they have. So now they show they'll run it both ways. Now we're on a fourth and two. This is a big play right here. This is a big play. I expect them to probably pass the ball here, but if they do happen to uh, do happen to run, I'll be I'll try to be as ready as possible for it. We're shaded up to not give up anything deep because we don't have any deep blues out there. We do not have any deep blues out there, so I'm shaded up over top to prevent ourselves from getting beat. And they are gonna pass. Running back. Ah, nice. Ah, nice catch. That was a really nice catch. That was close, but a really nice play. And this is the benefit for them of staying in a formation, uh, different formations throughout the game. I have not really been pick up, able to pick up on too many tendencies. Here or there, but not a ton. And I'm actually, I think last time they went to this, they had a crosser going to the right, and they did. I tried to put a purple out there. Excuse me, a, a crosser going to the left, not to the right. But it's just, it's putting a little bit more pressure on me. To, to pick out what they're doing quicker than I usually would. And they're also able to quick hike a lot of these plays, which is also beneficial. Sneed! Sneed was able to get there. But it's just really just two different strategies going into a Madden game. Staying in the same formation and doing a bunch of different things or going to multiple formations and doing a couple... Oh, I had a legal contact. I had a legal contact. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I hit someone. I am sure I hit someone go, uh, trying to get out there because I was caught off guard by their hike. But yeah, so just... Two different strategies for going at it, and I got caught there. Going to multiple formations and having a few plays that you like to go to out of each, or going to really one or two and having a lot, uh, more, like a lot of plays, probably five, six, seven, eight. Just two different strategies of ways going at it. That's gonna go into the fourth quarter. We wish we got that stop with that pick. We'll see if we can get one right here. I'm still gonna play on them here, running the I form wing to the left. Yeah, they are. They are. Oh, oh no, I'm not gonna get there. Oh, they're gonna score. Nice play. Okay, we're only up. Seven now. We're only upset now, pending the extra point. We we kind of need some points right here. Clock's important to try to take a decent amount of clock, but the main thing is here to try to get a score to go back up two possessions. This looks like a zone here to start off. We'll see what we can do. Oh, we're gonna have the angle route. Good job, Reggie Bush. That looked like a cover three there. That looked like a cover three, and it was okay. You can't you couldn't see it there because I, I haven't adjusted my camera, but that was a cover three. I'm going to go back to this play. I like the way that that play looked. I feel like we'll have either the corner route or we'll have that angle route again. I think we have, I think we have Vernon. I think we have Vernon. I think we have Vernon Davis. Let's go. Okay. This is a really nice spot to be in the field right now. So, cause we can get, cause we can get a first down here. We can get a first down without scoring, but we also can take some more clock here. We can do both. And then if we get to a fourth down, we can kick three and go up to possession. So I love being in this spot. I love being right around this red zone where we can't really, it's, it's going to be really tough to lose a lot of yards to get knocked out of field goal range. But we can take some clock right here and we'll we'll take the seven we'll take the seven when the seven's there we'll take it and it would have been nice to take some clock and then get seven but when you get the seven i kind of i kind of think we should take it so the strategy for defense on this drive now is just not to give up any big plays we're shaded up over top oh and drc made a play drc made a play we were shaded up over top there we just didn't want to get beat deep we were keeping our deep halves anything to really just prevent ourselves from getting beat over the top there is the main goal because you want to make them take as much time as possible or get a stop those are the two goals going into the drive we're able to get a stop and now we're just going to try to take clock we're just going to try to take the clock out here try to get a couple first downs i think two first downs we'll be able to clock out here depending on how many downs it takes that's our goal that's our goal for it here we can get to the two minute warning now as long as we just stay in bounds so i'm just gonna run the ball again and we'll see if we can get a first down that'd be great and Reggie Bush can do it. We'll fall down. We'll take it to the two-minute warning. Strategy is not really changing here after a first down. We're continuing to run the ball here. If we get a first down, great. If not, we will be able to take a field goal to go up those th those three possessions and put ourselves in a really nice spot there. They're actually going to take their timeouts. So if we're able to get this first down, that should pretty much do it. Ah, I, I missed the I missed the gap there. Now on this third and seven here, I'm actually going to pass the ball. But what I'm going to do is, if nothing's open, I'll just take a sack. I'm not going to pass the ball. Since we're on conservative, and if we don't press any buttons to pass the ball, we most likely will not fumble. We have our post. We have our post right there. That's exactly what we wanted. We get a first down, but we don't get a touchdown. That should allow us to chew out this game. And they're actually going to quit out. So great games to our opponent on a game two. Here we go with game two. You see our team. You see their team. It should be a good one. Starting this one off on defense here. We're gonna be doing the same thing that we did the first game as far as making sure we have our subs right, making sure everyone's in the right place to start the game off. And once you do that, you don't really have to worry about it for the rest of the game. You might have a change that you wanna make throughout the game, but other than that, not really too much that you have to do. And we're gonna, again, feel out drives for this one. What do they like to do on offense? Pass the ball, run the ball, pass the ball deep, pa pass the ball short. Ooh, I, th I thought that was actually a great route. That was an amazing play from Antonio Camardi right there. 
Now, we're on offense. Same thing here. We already showed you this in the first game, so I'm not going to show it to you again. We got to make sure our center audible is doing our subs. This looks like man coverage to start the game off here. So we're going to be trying to put some man beating routes out there. They did not get open. Now they got open. We have a running back. We have a running back. That looked like really good man coverage defense. So we're going to try to break this one down here. Try to figure out what routes are going to work for us, right? Let's see. First off, let's see if they have any one step ahead. Let's see if they have anything that's going to enhance their man coverage out there. So that's the first thing we're going to look at here. Double or nothings. Medium route KO. Medium route. Okay, they don't have anything that's going to stop them to stop our routes from working a little bit better. So there's not going to, there's not going to be anything that's enhancing their, their man coverage, right? There's not going to be anything out there that hurts us more than usual. Man coverage is really good on its own. Man, I, I just don't have anything open. I just don't have anything open right now. But again, one step ahead makes it a lot tougher. So we don't have, since we don't have to worry about that, we're able to do a little bit more here. And it's really just about finding out what routes are going to work for you that game. Sometimes slants are a little bit better. Sometimes crossers are a little bit better. Pose. Different things are going to work different ways. With way man coverage plays this year, not everything's perfectly going to be the same, right? In years past, you know, okay, this post route's going to get open every single time. In years past, this crossing route's going to get open every time. This year, a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes they're going to work. Sometimes they're not. You're going to have to make sure we're channeling in here, making our reads. And that post from the tight end looked pretty good. Looking for our slant or our crosser here. We're going to have the slant. We're going to have the slant. Nice job, McLaurin. Nice job. I hope what I was saying throughout that man coverage little ramble that we had there was making sense there. We have our slant. Nice nice job, Chad Johnson. Really nice route. Yeah, I just hope it makes sense because, again, sometimes some routes are going to really like be really effective for you. In other games, they might not feel quite that way. So I'm just trying to figure out against this opponent here, which one's going to work. We actually had our post. Josh Allen. Josh Allen got the nice burst out of the pocket right there. We'll definitely take a touchdown on our first drive. Maybe it wasn't the best start to the drive. They were playing some really good defense. Again, just kind of doing a feel-out drive. How they were playing with their man coverage. Also, things that you want to notice is where they're putting their zones out of the man coverage, right? That's something that we like to do on our defense. I like to play a lot of man coverage. I like to mix up what zones we have there. Have out there. Are they leaving their deep pass? Are they playing like a cover one hole with a deep third in the middle and then like a yellow that's in the middle of the field? Picking out those things, seeing, noticing what they're doing is really important to being able to go against that man coverage because... If they have zones out there that are going to stop your routes that you want to use to beat man coverage, you probably shouldn't even uh, try to use them because, for example, if a corner route is going to get open against the man coverage, right, and they have a purple that they're putting out there that's stopping that corner route, that corner route's not really being effective for you even if it's beating the man coverage. So just noting what they're putting out there and trying to take advantage of that. So if they have purples and yellows out there, they might not have any deep blues and you might be able to get it over the top. So just noting those different things, keeping keeping in mind what they're doing, it can help you to start to break down that man coverage a little bit and start being a little bit more effective. If they don't have any yellows out there, you can use some stuff in the middle of the field, like some crossers, some slants, stuff like that. So that's something that you really want to notice. I know it's not the easiest thing to do throughout the game. I struggle with it. I definitely struggle with it, figuring out what zones they have out there throughout the game. But if it's something that you can start to pick up on, you can make a little bit of pro really nice route. Awesome route. You can start to do you can start to do a little bit better against it. That's something that I've tried to improve on. But something that you could do is maybe just if you have like if you want to just go into practice mode, right? And then go against cover two man. Then go against cover one hole and just start to see, okay, these are where the openings are in the defense. That can be something that can help you out watching through this run. Just run nice tackle. That run actually looked pretty good. If we weren't able to get a block there right there. That looked like it could be open. So that's something we have to look out for as the game goes on. This is a little bit longer of a drive from them. We've seen a skinny post. We've seen a run play. Continuing to still feel out what our opponent wants to do out of their different formations. They're in this five wide. Now, this is something that I don't think they've gone to yet this game. So this again, this is, we're going to need to see what they like to do out of it. Oh, that was a really nice post. That was a really nice post. And in this five wide, if we're in the big nickel, we're going to have a linebacker on that receiver there. So that's going to be a really nice route we're going to have to worry about here. I'm actually going to probably try to put a zone there to stop it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my coach adjustments here. I'm going to put our uh, hook curls on 15, and that's actually where I'm going to put the safety this time, just to stop them on that cut. We're going to do this here. Put in this yellow here right there. Hopefully that stops it, and then we're going to grab this other safety. If that stops it, that's going to be really effective for us because we don't have to worry about using that, right? We don't want to have to worry about that. We're watching this slant ourselves. I'm not sure if the yellow played that. I'm not sure... If the yellow play on the cut, we might have to back it up to 20. I'm going to try to let them throw it first. If they throw it with the completion, then we'll back it up. But I do want to note that it did not look like it perfectly guarded the way that I was hoping that it would. So just going to keep that in mind. If they do happen to throw it, we'll make adjustments. But if they don't throw it, that just means that it's probably deterring them from throwing it here. Oh, they have a corner out. Nice knockout from Mays. Again, they're kind of taking advantage here of us having a linebacker on that receiver. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to worry about using that post. 
okay? We're going to have a zone on the left side. I'm going to worry about using the post myself. If they do the corner route, we have the purple out there to stop that. We're on default corner routes, which that looked like a shorter corner route, so we're watching for it. We're here on the post. We're here on the post. Got to make a tackle. We just got to make a tackle. Okay, we're on a fourth down. Now we're going to kind of see if they want to play. Okay, I was going to say, if they want to play aggressively, it looks like they are. We're going to have a spy. We're going to have a spy now to make sure that they can't scramble because they can get three yards with a scramble. And the spy is also going to take away anything that's short. Great dot. They dotted us pretty much the whole way. We were trying to adjust to what they were doing. They kind of would just, whatever adjustments I made, they were adjusting right back. So really nice drive from them. We're going to have to adjust in the next drive. But right here, what we have to focus on, there's about 228 left. We have to try to get points before half. It's our ball at halftime, right? So if we can get some points before half, we'll be in a great spot. So they actually came out in dollar, it looks like, which is going to be a little bit of a weaker defense as far as running the ball. So we're going to audible down to single back wing flex close. This is a big reason why we're in, why we're subbing in that Vernon Davis, subbing in that tight end out wide so that we can audible down to runs like that when they come out in a dollar, in a dime, anything like that. So we're going to continue to come out on this trip side end, but if they stay in that dollar, if they stay in a dime, look, we will audible down to the stretch, try to get to the outside, try to pick up some yards that way. Okay, they're back in, well, I don't remember. They, I think they were in 3-2-5 on their first drive. I can't quite, I can't quite remember, but they're back in a nickel. So I'm not gonna audible down this time. That's, we were able to get them out of that stronger run defense. Nothing's there, nothing's there. Really good defense. We're not really getting a ton of things open right now against the man coverage. So we're gonna go back to some things that worked on the first drive. We had that post from the tight end that worked for us. We had a slant. I think we might've thrown at least, we threw at least one, maybe threw two slants on that first drive. So we're gonna go back to that here. That's something that we can we can pretty much rely on. It looked like that first drive. So we're just trying to figure out what things we can rely on throughout the game. Throughout the game, nice job, Waller. Really nice route. That's what's working for us. So we have to keep that play in our back pocket while we kind of look for more things that are going to work for us. We pretty much know we can go to that play, right? But now, as we continue to work through this, we kind of need. A, we can't just have really one play that's working for us. We it helps to have at least a few. So we're going to continue to work for it. And if we're in a tough spot, we'll go back to that play. Looks like we have the post. We have the post. McLaurin. McLaurin. Nice catch from McLaurin right there. And that right there. See, that's them adjusting their zones to try to take away any man coverage routes. It looked like they put a flat on that side where the slant was going to, which might have done a good job of me deterring me to throw the slant. That time we actually had something going over the top and they didn't have any deep blues there. That's just kind of, it's not really something I did. I didn't notice that they didn't have any deep blues, but having that route out there, having that threat of that deep pass, allowed us to be able to make that read so that's why it kind of worked out for us there being able to go with different levels of the field you want to have something going deep you want to have some stuff in the middle and then maybe some short stuff that you can kind of rely on too and then whatever zones they have out there you're going to be able to counter it so we're at this 11 yard line now right we're going to go back to that play with the slant in the post that we felt like was working for us and it'll work usually in this 10 to 11 yard range and we, okay they're actually in zone i didn't notice oh we might have the slant anyways let's go i, I think that was probably illegal contact yeah, legal contact. We're going to decline that. So right here, we're at the one yard line. I'm going to come out of this trips tight end, but I'm going to audible down here. I probably should have noticed that they were in zone coverage. There. I'm not sure if they came out of man alignment, but if they didn't come out of man alignment, I want to note when that outside corner isn't uh, isn't lined up with our receiver, because if they're not lined up with our receiver, it's probably going to be a zone coverage. We're going to audible down here. We'll see what the run defense is looking like. We're just going to go to a dive. We don't want to lose a ton of yards like we would. We might on a stretch and we're able to get in. So now we have about 51 seconds here. We scored with a little bit of time for them to maybe put together a drive. They did dot us last drive too. They had, and they have three timeouts. So if, they, if we give those dots again, we might be in a little bit of trouble. We're going to have to figure out what zones are going to stop them from being able to pick up big chunks and or getting out of bounds. So I'm actually going to be watching the outside myself watching. Well, <laughs> I didn't get out there quick enough. I want to watch the corner route on the trip side myself. I'm going to put a zone out there on the left side to stop the corner route to the left side here. So here's what we're doing. We have Cromartie in the purple there. We have a yellow from our end to be able to try to stop the, the post route going across the middle of the field that they that they gave us trouble with. Wow, we're just getting dotted. We're going to have to get out of this. We're going to have to get out of this man coverage, at least for now. Maybe in the second half we can go back to it. We're going to have to get out of it for now because we're just not doing anything to really stop them. And that's not going to be good for us going into the second half here. So I have that hook curl to stop that post across the middle. If they do that slant again, I have a spy. If they do that slant again, I'll watch it. Another laser. Another laser. This five wide is giving us a lot of trouble right here. I'm trying to think through what we might do in the second half. Because we pretty much, we're, we're giving up three here, right? Like, unless they, they unless they, oh, okay. I was going to say we're giving up three unless they make a mistake. They dotted us. I didn't, I did not do anything there that I said we wanted to do before half. I said no big plays. We gave up big plays. I said no out of bounds. We let them get out of bounds. We, di we didn't do what we need to do right there to get a stop. It is our ball at halftime. 
So keep that in mind. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to have to actually just get out of Big Nickel. Completely get rid of Big Nickel. We don't want to have linebackers lined up with their receivers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to it like a dollar look. That'll allow us to get at least one more corner out there to match up a little bit better with what they're doing. Then the linebacker will be on their tight end. That's the only matchup that we'll have for the linebacker. And then the rest will be corners. We do have 18 seconds here to try for some points before half. But I'm really thinking to the second half now. I'm, I am going to try to get three, but I'm thinking in the second half, how are we going to adjust to stop them? That dollar's what's in mind, and then we'll kind of go from there. Now, they did come out in dollar here, but I don't want I don't really want to audible down with 18 seconds left. Maybe if I had three timeouts, I would. But since we only have one timeout, we kind of need to pick up a big play. So audibling down to the run here probably wouldn't be the best play. And they're actually going to get a sack. And what we're going to do, we're just going to take it to halftime. No reason here to try to force anything, make any mistakes. We'll take it to halftime. So ideally, when you get a stop in a game in the first half, you want to have the last drive going into halftime. Because that way, you likely have a lead if you scored on those possessions where you got to stop. And then you have the ball to possibly go up two possessions. We did not, we didn't do that. We did not score on the last possession. We gave up the seven again, which allowed them to even the score. So it's not, it's not like we didn't get a stop. But it put us in a spot here where we have a little bit more pressure to score. Now, they're back in this dollar. So I'm going to go down to the run. And they didn't pinch their line. So I'm actually going to go down to a dive. I Usually, I would call stretch here. But since they didn't pinch their line, I'm just going to run dive. If they have great run defense for it, we'll go to the stretch next time. And that, it didn't look like it was going to be amazing run defense. But they're able to get a shed. So they do that again. I'm going down to the stretch. Even with the spread line, I'll go down to the stretch. We'll see. I kind of expect them. No, I expect them to go back to nickel. But they didn't here. So I'm going down to the stretch. And we'll see. And that it looks like well, they, they pinched a little bit, but they didn't. They pinched right. They, they spread right back out. So we'll see if we can get to the edge here. And that looked better. That looked better. They did have the spread line, but we're still able to get to the outside, pick up more yards on that stretch. I'm not going to do that every single time they're in the dollar, but to, to keep them honest, right? To keep them from being able to stay in it all game and be able to stop the run and the pass. I like to, I like to mix in the run there just to keep them honest. I don't want them to think I'm passing the ball every single play. We will pass the ball here. We have our smoke screen. Let's see if we can get a block. Let's see if we can get a block. Nice, McLaurin. Good job. Okay. Now, we mix in a pass. If they come back in that dollar again, I'll likely go down to the run. Continuing to just, you know, keep them honest. I don't want to run the ball every play so that they can start run committing. But then I also just don't want to pass the ball every single play. Now, if I audible down to this, it looks like I'm run. So they may run commit eventually. If they start doing that, that's when I'll mix in a pass out of this single back wing flex close. But until they do that, I don't see really a main reason for me to pass the ball out of this. I want them to show me the run commit first, right? Once they show me the run commit, then we can start, kind of start to play. Ooh, are we gonna pass the ball? Are we gonna, can I go to like a streak on that play? That can go, that can give me a touchdown if they run commit. They actually, uh, they went back to this nickel three, three, five. Okay. Now that we got them out of that dollar, we're gonna go back to passing the ball mainly. And they're in that man coverage. Again, I've already noted this before, but you can, you can tell that man coverage is there because that outside corner is to the inside. It's manned up over the receiver. It's lined up over the receiver. Now, okay, you see the corners outside. We've already noted that's going to be zone coverage. So keeping the, uh, noticing those things can help you to allow you to put out the right play, free play. So our pre-snap reach zone. I don't know what zone it is, but it's going to be some type of zone. It looks like we're going to have our pulse. We're going to have our pulse, McLaurin. McLaurin. All right. We're able to get a score out of halftime. Now we're going to go to that dollar like we talked about. Try to get a stop here. See what we can do. We're in this dollar now. That allows us to have a corner in that middle slot receiver position over, uh, I believe it's, it looks like 80, whoever that, whoever that is and why, I'm not sure. But whoever that is and why, we now have a corner. We're going to be able to get a press. Great shed from LT there. Great shed. That's going to help too, of course. But whoever that uh, middle receiver is, I can't see the name. Whoever that is, we're, we're going to be able to get a press now. If they come out of that five wide again, we're getting a press on the receiver as opposed to having a linebacker without a press before. That's going to allow us to be able to stop that a little bit easier. We're still shading over top. We don't want to give up any deep uh, deep passes here, so we're shading over top because we don't have any deep blues. But if they try to go deep, we like we, we want to shade up to just to prevent any streaks, anything like that from going over top. I'm actually going to take a delay game. That's cool too. We'll take, we'll, we'll accept that. But I want to, I want to stress this here. If you don't have any deep blues, I would recommend shading up, especially on this side of the field. You don't want to give up an 80 to 90 yard touchdown pass because you didn't shade up over top when you didn't have any deep blues out there. Now, if you have deep blues out there, that's up to you if you want to shade over top. So keep that in mind. You see, they had a streak there. So if we didn't shade over top, that could have been a big play. Now we have a third and long. I'm going to do the same thing. I want to take our deep blues off to try to stop those routes that would, were, were hurting us before, which were corner routes and that post route across the middle. We have... The uh, yellow there and the and the purple there. That's to stop the post. 
If they go to the corner route, I'll try to use her that right side. They didn't go to it. Oh, good knockout. Great knockout. Okay, now we have a fourth and long. We're going to see here if they're going to punt. If they don't punt, we're in a position where we're going to be able to go up two scores without any mistakes if we get a stop. We're going to be in field goal range already. So they're going to go for it. This is, the, this is one of the biggest plays of the game here. If I can get off the field, I should put two purples on both sides. I'm actually going to play uh, over top and then I'm going to play sticks. That's going to allow them to play 20 yards. I haven't changed my flats yet. So they wouldn't automatically play 20. So I'm going to play sticks. I'm shaded over top here. I'm watching for that middle post that was that they were throwing before. I'm on that with Hyde. We're able to get the shed. Okay. Now we don't want to make any mistakes. I do not want to throw an interception here because we have a chance to go up two scores with just a field goal. A field goal would put us up 10. This is this is a big drive here. I a touchdown is better than a field goal, but a field goal is better than zero. So we'll, we're going to pass the ball first play here, but I do not want to force anything. If nothing's open, I'm going to just probably either throw the ball away or take a sack. We have the running back out of the backfield. Can we stay in reds? Oh, we stayed in bounds, but we weren't going to get in the end. So I'm just going to take this to the end of the quarter here. want to take as much time as possible because now if we do go up two scores, I'd like to take as much time as possible, give them less time to come back. Now we're actually going to audible down to single back wing flex close. We're going to go to that stretch that we were running before. If it works, great. If it doesn't, Ideally, we stay in bounds here and we don't lose too many yards. We don't want to lose like five or six. We're able to get to the outside and Reggie Bush is able to get in. All right, now we have a full two scores with 14 points up. Of course, if they go for two point conversions, it wouldn't be a complete full two scores. Definitely love the two touchdown lead here. Let's see if we can get a stop. And they're actually going to quit out. So great games to our opponents. That's going to do it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all are enjoying these types of chaos coachings where they're a little bit less edited, a little bit more focused on coaching. I hope I show my play art a little bit more in this one. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Only if you want to. Take it easy. Peace. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.